Crash Bandicoot is back. Sony has recently announced the Insane Trilogy, a remastered collection of the original three Crash Bandicoot games developed by Naughty Dog. The last time we saw Crash in his proper form was Crash Mind Over Mutant in 2008, and the last time he was handled by his proper creators was Crash Bandicoot Warped in 1998. That's a long time ago. Many kids who grew up in the 90s, such as myself, have a strong nostalgic connection to these games, and revere them as staples in the echelons of gaming history. Are these games really as good as we remember, or are we blinded by emotional memories of our childhoods that cause us to remember Crash differently than what the game actually is? I thought I'd take a look at the original three Crash games, since those are the ones being remastered in the Insane Trilogy, and let's face it, every other game in the Crash series is complete garbage. Besides Crash Team Racing, that one's awesome. In a recent interview on YouTube, Naughty Dog co-founder Jason Rubin was asked by IGN's Ryan McCaffrey what he thinks of the new remaster of the original Crash games. Jason Rubin's response is very interesting. I think people will find that those games were harder than they remember, <laughs> not as balanced as they remember, and probably not as forgiving and, and perhaps not as fun as modern games are, just because developers have become much better at what they do in the, in the 20 years since, since Crash launched. Okay, so one of the people responsible for creating Crash Bandicoot is basically saying, be wary, your fond memories of Crash may be shattered when you go back and play them when they're remastered, so don't get your hopes up. I think there's actually a bit more to it than that. Some of what he said is absolutely true. Crash comes from an era when video games were designed a lot differently than they are today. Games were on average designed to be tougher, such as having a finite amount of lives to use until you're booted backwards in progress, forcing you to value death higher. Activities required a higher level of finesse and dexterity, margins for error were shorter, developers thought gamers wanted a challenge not to have their hand held. In Crash, you don't have hit points or a defense rating to help repel incoming threats. If you get hit, you're dead, and back to the most recent checkpoint you go. You can collect Aku Akus, but each one only absorbs one hit and doesn't save you if you fall into a pit. I think fun is a more complicated question to answer, and that is largely subjective. What one gamer finds fun, another one might hate. There are plenty of people who don't like League of Legends, which is played by millions of people, and there are people who love Destiny. I know it's hard to believe. So then, does having good memories of a game you haven't played in 15 years obscure your ability to tell if the game is actually good or not? Well, I believe someone who is used to modern games and has never played Crash or anything from that period will definitely think of it differently than someone who has. At the same time, what does someone who is 30 years old and played Mega Man when they were a kid and skipped over Crash think of them? You see, it's hard to evaluate a game we played when we were kids, especially if those memories are good. Memories of games to me are more than just of the game itself. I remember the Christmases and birthdays when I got Crash games. I remember the old room I used to play Crash in. I remember the friends I used to talk about Crash with. Remembering Crash also makes me remember aspects of my childhood, a time long past but I look back on very fondly. How do you decouple those things? How do you look at a game objectively when you, when you have memories that are so tightly woven into the experience of that game? Well, I don't think you can, but your memories of a game don't affect what the game actually is. What you can do is examine the mechanics, the characters, and the stories, and see how they hold up. All three of the original Crash games are action platforming games at their core. You run through a linear level, the camera glued to your character, and try not to die while smashing boxes, collecting fruit, and finding secret gems or paths. Crash is responsive. He moves, jumps, and spins when you want him to, and doesn't eject himself off of a wall he's climbing when you don't want him to. There isn't a lot of depth in these games. There is no deep, controversial themes in the story. The characters don't grow through a journey of self-discovery and adventure. You don't collect experience points from enemies or use it to level up your spin attack at the height at which Crash can jump. Crash is focused on its moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. You encounter an enemy that doesn't die to a spin attack and figure out how to get through it. You try to bounce over every damn box in a makeshift bridge without falling into the pit below so you can get the completion bonus at the end. You find hidden gems you can't quite reach yet and remember it for later when you inevitably figure out how to get to it or end up in an area near it later on. The games mix it up a bit by throwing you into a level where you get chased by a boulder and jump from platform to platform avoiding obstacles along the way. The third game even adds sections with vehicles such as a motorcycle but it all follows these core concepts. These games are just plain fun. There's not a lot of fluff that gets in the way of you jumping in and start running through, spinning and stomping your way to the end of a level before you pick the next one to beat that one too. The graphics are extremely dated, but impressive for the time, as is expected. By nature, it does get repetitive doing the same thing over and over again, but the game does a good job of keeping its purity intact. Should you be excited for the Insane Trilogy? I guess that depends on what you were looking for. Are you looking to satisfy your nostalgic thirst and want to wait for a version of these games that can fill the amount of pixels your TV has to offer? I think this will do just that. The games are being modified to look better. They aren't being reimagined like the remake of the original Ratchet & Clank on PS4. 
These games will be exactly as they were on the PlayStation 1, but just look prettier. Are you looking for a good game to play when your options are the endless sea of first person shooters, MOBAs, and No Man's Sky imposters? Oh wait, that was the actual game itself. I think that is something nobody will be able to tell you, especially if someone has a connection to Crash that you don't have. If you do decide to pick it up, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Games aren't made like this anymore, and since it's been so long since these games have come out, maybe what's old is new again, and you'll make your own connection with Crash just like us kids did in the 90s.